polynomials. Let a sub n, a sub n minus 1, all the way down to a sub 1, a sub 0 be real numbers, and n, n minus 1, dot 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 to 0 be whole numbers, then f of x equals a sub n x to the n plus a sub n minus 1 x to the n minus 1, plus continue on down to a sub 1 x plus a sub naught is a polynomial function. a sub n x to the n is the leading term, a sub n is the leading coefficient, and n is the degree. For example, f of x equals 2x to the power 4 plus 9 is a polynomial because the coefficient on the x to the fourth term is a real number, as is the a sub 0 term, which is 9. g of x equals 9 times the square root of x plus i is not a polynomial because this is equivalent to 9 times x to the 1 half and the exponents must be whole numbers and 1 half of course is not a whole number. And this is not a polynomial because h of x is 5 times x to the minus 2 and whole numbers start at 0 and go forward. So this is also not a polynomial. Before I talk about the next concept, we need to discuss notation. The right arrow, as you see here, is used in math to describe a variable approaching another value. This is a behavior, not an equation. For example, x approaches positive infinity, or x approaches negative infinity, or we might say f of x, which of course is y, approaches positive infinity, or f of x approaches negative infinity. Do not use the arrow symbol in fact, don't use any symbol in math unless you're absolutely positive what it means in words and math. We'll consider the polynomial f of x equals 3x to the power 4 plus 5x cubed plus 4x plus 4. And we'll think about what happens to the y values f of x as x approaches infinity. Here I have the graph of a polynomial f of x equals 3x to the power 4 plus 5x cubed plus 4x plus 4. And now I'm going to compare that with the graph of the polynomial of just the first term. And it, they don't look similar at all. But if we zoom out to look at the end behavior, so we get up here where y is a million or 10 million, they're indistinguishable from one another. The leading term of the polynomial a sub n x to the power n, so that's the term that determines the degree of the polynomial, determines the end behavior of the graph as x approaches infinity and also as x approaches negative infinity. And it turns out if we have an even degree and the coefficient is positive, it looks basically like a quadratic, although we don't know really what it's doing exactly close to zero, but the end behavior will go up. If the degree is even and the leading coefficient is negative, then it's the upside down parabola. If the degree is odd and the leading coefficient is positive, that resembles the x cubed function or the cubic function. If the degree is odd and the leading coefficient a sub n is negative, it's the flip of the cubic function. In the example, we're asked to use the leading term test to sketch the end behavior of the following functions. So in A, f of x has a positive leading coefficient and an even degree. So it's going to have this quadratic-like appearance. We don't know what's going to happen uh, near its zeros. We can see it indeed does have that shape. In part g, we have a negative leading coefficient and an even degree. So it's still going to have a quadratic look but now it'll be opening down and not opening up. And we can see that, in fact, is the case. In part C, we've got a positive leading coefficient and an odd degree. So this will have the shape kind of like a cubic. You can see that is, in fact, its shape. For part D, we have an odd degree and a negative leading coefficient. So this will also have a cubic shape. And we see that is, in fact, what the graph looks like. Now we'll talk about zero solutions and intercepts. To find the zeros of a polynomial, we must solve the equation f of x equals zero. 
the zeros of the polynomial functions are the x-intercepts. So in the first polynomial, f of x equals x to the power 4 minus 5x squared plus 4. We need to set that equal to 0. I'll need to solve that by grouping. That's x to the power 4 minus x squared minus 4x squared plus 4 equals 0. So remember when we do grouping, I've just rewritten minus 5x squared as negative x squared, negative 4x squared. I'm going to be able to factor by grouping x squared times x squared minus 1, and then minus 4 times x squared minus 1 equals 0. And that, of course, will give me x squared minus 4 multiplied by x squared minus 1. And I can factor each of these two. So I have x minus 2, x plus 2, x minus 1, and x plus 1 equals 0. So my zeros, or my x-intercepts, are where x equals negative 2, positive 2, negative 1, and positive 1. The x-intercepts, of course, these are points. So I have negative 2, 0, positive 2, 0, negative 1, 0, and positive 1, 0. And these will be the points where the graph crosses the x-axis. And we can see negative 2, 0, negative 1, 0, positive 1, 0, positive 2, 0. Similarly, to find the zeros for g, where g is x cubed, minus x squared, minus x, we set that equal to 0. We're going to pull out the common factor, which is x, and that leaves us with x squared, minus x minus 1 equals 0. We can factor out an x, but in order to solve the x squared minus x minus 1 that is left, we're going to need to use the quadratic formula. We know a is 1 b is negative 1, and c is also negative 1. So the, the uh, two zeros are x equals minus b, so that's 1, plus or minus the square root of 1 squared b squared minus 4ac, that's going to be 1 squared minus 4 times a, which is just 1, times negative 1, so that's actually going to be 5. So this is the square root of 5 all over 2a, that's just 2. So my zeros are x equals 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2, and x equals 0, and then x equals 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. 1 minus the square root of 5 divided by 2 is approximately negative 0.618. Let's say negative 0.62. So my x-intercepts, well, I have approximately negative 0 0.620, 0, 0, and about 1.620. So these approximate. And we can see our three zeros on our graph. Approximately negative 0 0.620, 0, 0, and approximately 1.620. Lastly, let's talk about even and odd multiplicity, or touch points and cross points. If we have a factor x minus c to the power k, and that's a factor of the polynomial function, and it's the highest possible factor, so x minus c to the power k minus 1 is not a factor, if that power of the factor k is even, the graph touches but does not cross, it turns around and goes back up or turns around and goes back down, the x-axis at the point c, if k is odd, the graph crosses the x-axis at the point c. In the example, we're asked to determine the zeros and their multiplicities for the function f of x equals x minus 2 to the power 3 multiplied by x plus 3 to the power 4. So we would have to solve the zeros by saying x minus 2 cubed multiplied by x plus 3 to the power 4 equals 0, set f of x equal to 0. Our first zero will be x equals 2. This had a, has a multiplicity of 3, which is odd, so it would cross the x-axis at the point x equals 2. Of course, that'll be y equals 0. Our next zero is y equals negative 3, 
and that has a multiplicity of fours, it's the power is four, and this would touch but not cross the x-axis at the point negative three, zero. And we can see here at negative three, it's a touch point, and here at positive two, it's a cross point.